What up, what up? I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with No Labels Necessary Podcast, episode number 36. You can catch us every Tuesday and every Thursday on any of your streaming platforms, YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, talking about music, marketing, and the content creator economy as a whole. And as y'all know, as always, we like to get straight to the sauce. We don't have any advice today. We just got a statement from none other than Damian Ritter. If y'all don't uh, um, know Damian, he is an accomplished music exec, um, led one of the dopest and fastest growing indie labels in the game at one point. And he doesn't think that artists should be CEOs. I want to play this clip and see what y'all think about it. Coming from the corporate world and knowing what like real CEOs do, how much knowledge they have of their business, how much knowledge they have of their industry, there are very few artists that are equipped to be a real CEO. Most artists that say they want to be CEO is just an ego thing. It's just like, hey, I want to have control over everything and I don't want to make it appear like I'm not the boss of my business, even if that's not the best thing for your business. So I don't think CEO is a, is a perfect role title but if i was forced i would say that the uh, manager and this is not to say all managers are equipped to be ceo either but if you have a manager that understands what they're doing i would say they're probably more of the person that's equipped to be a ceo than any artist like don't get me wrong like there are a few artists that i run across like we don't even need to play the rest of this right damn you don't have to hit him with no qualifiers <laughs> you know <laughs> trying to uh, you know <laughs> predict the heat and stave off the heat at the same time i'm making a statement you meant what you meant sir and i agree yeah i agree point blank a, a, a wise man once said i'm a I'm not a businessman i'm a business man who was that uh jv you sure yeah bring me line. let me know nah, nah, i just oh, okay i was like, <laughs> like i ain't got a lot to you now, before they come from my ass. <laughs> and, and as much as people scream that line, I don't sound like, oh, I'm not a, I'm a business. It's like, yeah, bro, some of you are the entity, but it doesn't mean that you're equipped to run the entity at, at, at no in full. You know, this is the reality of it, bro. A lot of artists don't, I want, I want, you know, a lot of artists don't really want to do the things that go into being a CEO. Being a CEO is boring, bro, and a lot of work. I don't think people realize that. Yeah, they think it's cool and glamorous, and they see Jay-Z with the nice suits on. Yeah. And, Shit, and like, oh, I want to do that. And it's like, bro, being a CEO is being in meetings all day. It's 30 people, 30,000 people coming to you with their problems. And most artists just want to be creators and make the music. Bro. They don't really want to do the CEO it's work. A lot of execution, <laughs> a lot less creativity. Yeah, a lot less. Right? It's draining, especially if you still want to be an artist at the same time. It, so it's funny, it's almost like the reverse. I'm a businessman. Like, you are a business because you're the product, yeah. but you're not a business. You're not a businessman, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think. Well, when I hear this, it really relates back to something I've been telling artists for a long time. Every artist isn't meant to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, facts. Right? Yeah. And we have this ownership, ownership mentality, but what are you owning, right? What are you controlling? What do you have control over? Do you know how to know what to do with what you have control over and own, right? Because somebody else might be able to do more and better with it. So, of course, these things are popular terms, right? I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a boss. I want to be a CEO. But you have to get a realistic view of what that actually means. There's some people who should be an entrepreneur as an artist and some who shouldn't, just like the regular workplace. There's some people who decide I want to work at a corporation or whatever type of job. And there's some people who say, hey, I can't do that at all. And I want to run this thing. And then there's the people in between who might go back and forth, depending on whatever the opportunity is. So it's the same for an artist, right? Like, do you want to take all the problems that come with doing something from ground up? And then once you hit a certain level and you can be more of a CEO, because you know, it doesn't really even count when it's just you, yeah. right? And Or just you and another person. Y'all partnered in something, right? Y'all working on a project. Yeah. When you have a, a, an entity and you're CEO, now that you have to be in control of hiring, firing, making sure that the execution goes on the way through from beginning to end. Got to build SOPs. <laughs> then those processes, those procedures, man, it's a different type of uh, mentality. All right. So I think 
the ego is the biggest thing that I, I see kind of like Damien said, and it's not just artists, right? It's just a lot of people in general who, especially are working from ground zero, yeah. right? It's it's almost, honestly, it's like poverty, poverty mentality. Is that poverty mentality? Yeah. What does it mean? Or it, I don't want to say, all right, not just straight poverty mentality because it's not thinking poor. I would say just being on a come up, like, and not being upper class, the way we get marketed to, right? Yeah. Is like the CEO is the glamorous thing to be. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I remember all these dudes having a CEO on a business car. We print, make a business, create a CEO on a business car, and show everybody that we're a CEO of something. But there's nothing to be shown for it. There's no actual business there. Yeah. And we're just happy with the idea of saying we're the CEO of something. Right. Where you'll have some people who got money, like the more and more you see and you're around, you start to see, man, some of these people, yeah, they'll start a business from day one. They'll hire everybody, including a CEO, because uh -huh. they not trying to run that shit. They just want the money and, yeah. and own the business. Yeah. Right. So they, we think of it a lot differently. Um, like as you mature and learn more about business, because one, you can't be the CEO of everything. You might not be the best equipped person, but if you get good at putting the best team around you, I understand who does have those skill sets, then you'll be good. From an artist standpoint, I think something that should be clear is the vision. Like, so CEOs in some businesses, from a founding business, right? The founder is like, I'm leading the charge. I am the vision. But um, if you're if you're hiring people on, it's weird. You might have somebody technically be the CEO, but you still have to have a, a strong part in that. Yeah, but I think I think you said the the correct word that I think artists are looking for. But CEO is just a more popular bro. You're the founder of this business, right? Yeah, and that's that's typically that's true. Like the way that I kind of I think see most artists describe it. Yep. Is yeah, they take on the founder role, right? I want to be the 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 lead horse of this. I want to kind of be in charge. I want everybody to be behind my vision. It's like, yeah, bro, that is more of a founder, bro. Like this, the CEO is like Damien was saying more of the managerial aspect or man, more of your manager's role. Like for real, especially if your manager is like super business savvy and your contribution to your company, you know, from, from that aspect is picking the right people to help you run your company in the ways that, that you don't know how, you know what I'm saying? And there's no shame in that. Like every business is like that. Like you said, there are, there are multi-billion dollar companies where the founder doesn't run day to day as CEO. Yeah. So he maybe did it, he or she maybe did it into that, into a point to where, you know, when they had to do it, but as soon as they got the capital not to, that was that shit, right? Hey, you person over here, I like you, you charismatic, you you understand X, Y, Z about the business. I'll give you, you know what I'm saying, half a million a year, and you run this shit while I go do the other stuff I like to do, like build a product or talk right. to the people or make the content or whatever that looks like for the business owner. So a lot of artists fall in that same bucket. You, yes, all of you are founders of the business, and you no, know, anybody can be, I guess, qualified to be a founder, technically. But that doesn't mean that you are qualified to be the CEO. Bro. You know what I'm saying? You might, you, and like a lot of you listening don't even really want to be the CEO when you when you get into it. I came across this guy on my Instagram yesterday, but I don't know why I was just randomly looking at my followers. Very small artist, maybe like 118 followers. Yeah, like CEO or whatever in his bio. And I was like, that shit don't hit like you think it do, bro. Like, you know what I'm like? I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, you probably thought that shit was hard when you put it in his bio. I'm like, that shit don't hit like you think it do. Especially today, <laughs> right? The jig is up. Today, everybody is starting all, all these businesses, yeah. so people don't look at it. Yeah. You don't have the followers or some kind of big business. People don't even look at it that same way. So that's when I get back to the ego of it all. Yeah. It's like, look, man, what's more important to you? And if you do want to be the CEO, you have to understand it's something that you need to grow into and take it seriously. Mm -hmm. That's the more important part because you can't be expected to be the most equipped person from day one. Yeah. There's a lot of things you have to learn. And there might be some people who have those tangible skills and experiences, but for whatever reason, they might not be the best person yeah. for, your, for your business. So I'm not always saying that every artist should hire somebody else to be the CEO very least i think the coo is very very important yeah. all right like who's running the operations because that's the part that's the most hard uh difficult i feel like for artists yeah all right the leading 
certain visions, overall decisions. It's easier to get into that. But the operations, again, back to the execution of things to do that and remain creative is very, very, very hard. I heard Nipsey Hussle talk about it. Someone that we know was was a CEO yeah. type. You yeah. know what I mean? But he talked about how hard it was when he got out of his his flow and tried to get back into the studio. It would take him so long to kind of get back into the vibe. So he had to start planning and thinking around that. I can't remember what his solution was, but it's a hard ass thing to do. Yeah. And if you down to do that, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and even think about like, like we see that with all of them, bro. Like the, who are the most notable like artist CEOs you know with like 50 Cent, Master P, Jay-Z, uh, who else could we throw in there? Maybe, I guess Dane Dash. Did Dane Dash ever make music? He did, right, at some point? I, I, I think he has some. I think he got a verse of the, Did he? That's what maybe I was thinking. Did like, he? Yeah, probably a better way to go. And if you look at all of them, bro, it's like, think about, like, how long of a break you see, you see them take from being an artist, bro. Like, it'll be like, like, like they'd be dropping music, like, every, like, three, yep. four years, you know what I'm saying? Because it's probably so demanding, uh, so much demand from the businesses that are actually CEOs of. Yeah. And then everything that comes with that, right? Like, I, not only am I entering this industry, I have to learn about this industry and don't know what type of people I need to help make me successful in this industry. That alone could be a couple of years of work, you know what I'm saying, for real, for real. Um, on top of the, the building the product, you know, the, or the creative or whatever. So, like, it's a it's a hard thing even for those that are qualified for it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it has to be because of, like, how many different, just, like you said, stepping out from creativity and going, like, man, I have to be way more analytical, I have to be, now I have to be structured because CEOs have to be very structured or at least I have a good degree of structure. And most artists I know hate structure, you know what I'm saying? So many things that come with it. Uh, like I said earlier, man, I, I think if more artists really understood that, I don't think they would chase that title as much or brag about it as much. Who do you know that's recognized as, as a super creative and also a CEO? Maybe Drake. Does see you recognize that way? As a super creative? I mean, I don't think any of them really get recognized as a super creative. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Maybe Kanye? But I I I don't I don't know if Kanye is CEO is his, his own his brand. So I, I feel think, like he might have somebody. I think as of late. Yeah. But it's more of a it's a different type of role yeah. than a typical CEO because yeah. you know how Kanye moves. He has very, very strong operators and executors. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, one, if you aren't the CEO, I mean, if you are the CEO, but you aren't a song executor, again, goes back to you need some executor in your, your, uh, your corner. Your, yeah, your corner. But if you look at, yes, the CEO mogul artists, most of them, have a certain mentality that doesn't, or a certain approach that many artists don't even resonate with on the music side, yeah. right? It's a certain type. Diddy, Rick Ross, Jay-Z, Master P, Baby. All right, we're not talking about Donald Glover here. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? We're not yeah. talking about Pharrell right here. It doesn't mean that they don't, like Pharrell, Tyler, the Creator, Donald Glover, none of them ever are the CEO of anything, right? Especially like like for real, he's been a part of so many things uh, musically, but then he's graduated past that to um, the color. What is it? I am color or something? Or but like, he has that film or TV production company, whatever that is, and some other things. He might be CEO over some of those things, but he's also not a musical prime in terms of like that's his main focus day to day on the rise, right? Yeah. So. I think you have to think about a certain type of animal that you need and want to be if you want to be a CEO in that way. And also, of course, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Right? Like, that changes things. But you look at Russ, he's in that camp. Like, I can see him being a CEO. I don't know if what his technical role is that he calls himself or whatever, but he's in a song, same bucket of thinking and moving that you mm-hmm. put those people in. Yeah. Um talked about Nipsey Hussle. La Russell, I could see him being considered a CEO and moving in that particular way, the way yeah. he thinks and moves, right? Yeah. But again, there's there's a this a similar line that you can draw between all those people in terms of how they acknowledge and what they're acknowledged most for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 
that's something I think at least the artist should always think about. Like, who's done this successfully that's most like how I want to be? Yeah. <laughs> And what does that look like? And what does that look like? And if there hasn't been anybody who will make music in the way and type of creativity I have, and being the CEO, at least try to figure out like why it might have been. That's that's all I can say to that. But that's a dope um, conversation. Whenever I hear that CEO, I think people are going to be arguing about that for a minute because yeah. until they get like more legit examples, I gotta let us know, man. All my artist CEOs, you know, speak up in the comments. I need to, I need, need to know what's going through your head right now. Right. <laughs> exactly. Now, one quick thing, everybody, we have made the decision that we are going to drop merch oh, at yeah. some point. Oh yeah. At some point. Now, this isn't like a uh, a secret announcement or any kind of finesse. We genuinely want to know you guys' thoughts. We let our private group know. We had a private brand man um live podcast, not brand man, no labels live podcast on Thursday, and they were like, "Yeah, we'd be down to buy." But we literally don't have any graphics for any of it. So any of y'all like have any graphic design or friends or you're a graphic designer and y'all would like to pitch some potential designs that y'all can envision for no labels necessary. Here's the opportunity to get at, at the ground floor. Um, the best way to inquire is email support at brandmannetwork.com. Support at brandmannetwork.com. We'll put the link in the description or the email in the description. Y'all hit that up and we'll figure it out from there. This is truly us doing it in real time. We don't have any like big announcement coming. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but if y'all, y'all support and y'all want some, definitely let us know. We would love to hear more validation. And if y'all um, know anybody who can think of some dope designs, we're going to kind of try to figure out and, and in real time, even have y'all a part of our design selection process. But that's all I wanted to say there. Now, with that being said, Next topic, there's a song going crazy viral on TikTok, all right, for a plethora of reasons. But then there's also some bag drops at hand as well. Bag. So I hear some whisperings. <laughs> so don't drop the bag when you go viral. There's a couple of ways you can drop the bag when you go viral. Here's one of them. Now, first, let me show you the song. And that's for nobody. When they ain't had shit, they ain't up for me nothing. All right, can't play the full song because of copyrights and everything. But if you are viewing, there's a guy who is rapping, looks like a tennis court, and he got the mic hanging down. Y'all know how those videos are. He got the mic hanging down, even though you're in the middle of nowhere and you're rapping. Well, he got one of those going on, right? And it's funny, because the song goes viral, not just because of the lyrics and it being a solid song, but it's because of Buddy's hair. Now, I don't think this was planned. Like, it would have been nice. Well, a lot of artists don't have this sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> it's a green light, us making fun of you as a campaign. Yeah. Right? Now, yeah. we've had ideas like that. Artists don't be feeling that. Y'all y'all gotta, look, people are gonna, let me say this first, people are gonna make fun of y'all anyway. It's best to leverage it. You know what I mean? All right, go ahead and put that thought out here. So if you're watching this, you'll be able to see this guy's hair. Um, He got like an afro, he got, you know, waves in the front. And an uh, afro in the back, like some Super Saiyan type. I don't even know what to call it. Is there a name for it? I don't know. That shit fall though. It, 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 look, Ja'Cory says it's fine. That shit fall. Well, look, it's it got him going viral. You watch some of these clips. Literally, people type. <laughs> <laughs> people have him rapping at the mic, and then they literally just have his hair going from infinity to infinity, almost like, shoot, almost like, like, like a DBZ character, right? I am, bro. Like, people underestimate the power of hair when it comes to virality, bro. Hey. I mean, that right hairstyle on the right day, bro, it gets you a hundred percent. God got it going into two different pieces <laughs> of paper. <laughs> Funny enough, where is the my favorite one? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry for those who are just listening, but we're just playing and showing a, a couple different clips of basically people reenacting what he's doing. Go watch this. This is episode 36. People are doing crazy things to reenact. Was it a microwave? What his hair looks like. I think that's a big air fryer taped to the back of this dude's head. I think that's a big air fryer. Crazy, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> then you got another guy, got a dog in his hoodie. Where's my favorite one? Let's see what this guy had. Oh, this kid. Cute. All right, the toothbrush. There we go. The toothbrush. <laughs> Rabbit looked like a, a, a book bag. 
handle. So this song is going viral because people are making fun of him too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But they're playing the clip while they're making fun of him because they're pretending to be him rapping. Yep. The power, the power of taking something that could be a weakness <laughs> and capping off of it is always there. And if y'all will allow yourselves to be made fun of, it will bring attention back to you. You don't do it through your own page. I think that's what a lot of artists miss. Because mm -hmm. I remember pitching this to a client last year, and he was so against it. Fortunately, we ended up popping him off going viral a different way. But he was just like, yeah, I don't want people to, to think that this isn't serious or something like that. Bro, man, it doesn't matter. And we he all, ended up getting memed anyway. You know, like we all get laughed at. Yeah, we all get laughed at. You let other people do it because that's going to bring eyes back to the song. It's going to blow up. And then we're good. And he ended up getting made fun of for something else that I didn't foresee. But it also worked, right? So allowing yourself to be made fun of is the trick. That's that's the, the jester in the court where everybody thinks that the joke's on him, but it really the joke's on you because he's just look, playing dumb while he's getting all the attention, all right? So don't be afraid of being a joker. Everybody uses that role every once in a while. Now, with that being said, he's messing, he's messing up, right? Tell us how this song is, how they fucking up the money. Yeah, man, so, you know, word on the street is that he got an unclear sample in the song, which I'm pretty sure, I haven't listened to the song before, but I, I just learned about it through the little birdie, you know what I'm saying? Okay. That's what put me on game, so I was like, oh, this shit, but, yeah, the word is that there's an unclear sample in the song, I think Atlantic owns the sample, so, you know, they're about to try to get us up off on, you know? And we've seen that, it happens a lot. It happens a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, these artists will pop from ground zero, get these massive hits, the attention hits before they understand what they're doing or, try, or, the, or are able to get the, the sample cleared. And then these major label entities come behind me like, oh yeah, you don't fucked up, bro. I hope you know that, you know what I'm saying? We about to get this shit up off you. And so, I think it's gonna be interesting, you know, and I, I the, the birdie could be wrong, but I think it's gonna be interesting to see like how this affects him. Cause I think on one hand, it would suck, right? If they were able to take the song away from him, which to me says that if he probably needs to go ahead and start capping on this shit now, you know what I'm saying? Put out maybe an EP, a couple of other singles, you know, get a little bag off of somebody, you know what I'm saying? Start building the face card and building the brand. If they able to swipe that shit from under him and this is his biggest song, that shit gonna be ugly, man. It's gonna be sad and ugly. Look, man, to me, one, I wonder if he paid for the beat. That's a, that's another good point. That'd be interesting. You pay for the beat. Nah. And then you can't be anything. Yeah. Cool, cool. But he thought, made it seem like you own the beat. Yeah. Because he might not know. This is an old song that got sampled, right? Yeah. So I can imagine there's some kids that don't even recognize the samples in some of the songs that they're, <laughs> that they're buying. And there's some producer who's like finessing them that they, cause they didn't know. Or yeah. or they don't even know that you can't yeah. sample because some people don't know the rules. Yeah, most of them don't even know. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So Does all this shit sound cool, sped up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. It's that simple, right? So it's an unfortunate situation on that side, but I still look at the value and the marketing of it all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I, I agree, man. I, I had a, a homie go through a, a almost go through a similar situation. Like he had sampled a song. And they were trying to get in contact with the people who he sampled to be able to put it out. It wasn't looking good at first. They had some caveats, some things that they wanted him to change about some other creative elements for the song to be cool. He did it, everything was okay. But they had a, a game plan on how they were gonna cap if these people said no. And one of the game plans, as fucked up as it was, is we were gonna pay people to leak it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're gonna hit one of these meme accounts. Yeah. Hit one of these big Reddit pages. Hey, little little fan, here go 50 bucks for you to go post this shit on the your name. Like, we just gonna get that shit out of there one way or another. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I know that happens. Like, I, I know for a fact that there are artists that do things like that. Hey, I can't cap on it. And if it comes back to my name, they're gonna sue me. So I need this to get out there to the fans in one way or another without me being attached to it. Cause I'm still gonna reap the benefits, right? Fans are starting to get savvy. If you talk loud enough and you tell fans, hey, that song that you like that you heard on your favorite meme account, I can't put that shit out because I don't have enough money to clear the sample or the people won't let me clear the sample. Two things gonna happen. Well, three things gonna happen. One, they're gonna be like, oh, this fucked up, bro. And they're gonna ride on your behalf. Two, 
they don't listen to it anyway because they like it. And fans don't give a fuck about no industry politics and paperwork and none of that shit. And then three, you still get the positive attribution of you made a song that I like. Even though you can't put it out, you still made some shit that I like, right? And so it still is a positive brand builder for you. And so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. With him, if if that rumor is true and Atlanta ain't trying to take this shit from London, bro, like, man, it's a race against time for, um, to see how big you can cap out this shit from a brand perspective before that shit happens, you know what I'm saying? That's the most important part, right? Just like any song that breaks. Yeah. If you aren't an artist that's broken yet, you just need to get them to know your face. Fortunately, like his face is a part of the meme. He's been artist up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He is the meme. So I'm not anti song that breaks you being a sample and you get no money from it. Yeah, same. I'm yeah. actually for it in many ways. Why? Because if it's a dope song, again, you get all the marketing attention to it. Mm-hmm. And how hard is it to get a song to break anyway? So you just got you just blew up for some music. Now people at least like you for your music. Yep. And now you just need to create another song versus I had to pay a whole bunch of influencers or run a whole bunch of ads or whatever I did, playlisting to then blow my song up. It's like, no, I just paid for a beat and it went viral by itself. Hey, shit. I I saved money. Yeah, I didn't get that money. Juice World, he didn't get probably, I think, even 90%, he didn't get even 10%, I think, of that track that blew up. No, I think it was time to that. I think they had to take like 90, 95%. It was something crazy. Sting smacked them across the head. <laughs> but. It's not fire, but it's fire. But. He do became <laughs> Juice World. Yeah. You know, it was just one song. So that power is still there. And then on top of that, I think you still don't have to, like, I wonder. No, actually, I'll take that back. Mechanical royalties do still go back to that same person, I think. Okay. But you still can get paid to perform that song. You know, I take the tour money. That's true. So if I get popping off of a song that y'all love that I don't hold the rights to, you still don't want to see Sting perform that shit. You want to see Juice World perform that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I still can get show money from it. Yeah. Now, obviously, getting shows, you probably want to have more than one song, da 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 And But even though there are some, like, one hit wonders that people pay you just to had that one hit performed or whatever at the party and get it turned. Yeah. Like, there's so many ways to capitalize off of it. And I think that's just the nature of the game where you, one way or another, you could fall into a blessing, fall into a little trap for a second. But in this industry, there's always a way to flip it. Like, always a way to flip it. And in the content age, if I can just go viral from posting some shit and not have to pay for the marketing, I'd almost use that as my strategy. I think that's many people's strategy, especially with women artists. Look at how many women artists they blow up with samples. Yeah. Knowing with samples, you're not going to get as much money. I don't know what the deals they negotiate, but still a huge thing with sample is, hey, samples, they're known in the mistakes. They they take that money, right? Yeah. So, But they say it doesn't matter because this shit is a hit. And as long as I get city girls popping, as long as I get... Sweeney popping, right? Let's see what what was Meg's shit that that pop. Meg did Meg have a sample? Yeah, yeah. Song that popped off. I don't even saw that pop. I don't think so. I'm trying to remember what was mm-hmm. what was the song that popped? I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that said. I don't. Know. <laughs> I mean, it's been like five years, you know. It's been like five, but uh, you know what? Well, yeah, maybe like like four, five, five, yeah. five and four. But yeah, a lot of hits in between there, you know. But st- oh, we're not having that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, point is, they do that with um, with female artists again and again. Yeah. All right, use samples to get them out there, but then take in the brand, especially because as much as they might say about women artists in terms of maybe being more expensive because of the looks or things like that or not getting as much, uh, like, respect in general, I feel like when women artists pop, they have way more flexibility than male artists because of how women support women, mm-hmm. right? And these brand directions that are natural where you can get into the beauty, every every aspect of it from the hair to the eyelashes to the makeup, mm-hmm. right? You can get into like reality TV and, and relationship stuff. And there's so many different things that that women have where, I don't know, guys have trouble translating for whatever reason. It's just another conversation, I guess, but 
It made me think about it, bro. It's like, bro, I'll get you buying jewelry, bro. I'll get a jewelry sponsorship. Yeah. Go partner with Icebox. Hey, Lee. Hey, man, I don't think they're trying to set that precedent. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we know it's a, hey, these companies, the jewels, it's on lockdown. They don't just let everybody get the jewels. It's hard for a buddy to just come up off the street and start a jewel company. I mean, you know, you're right, bro. You know, like, you're going to be a brand ambassador. You know what I'm saying? Something, man. Something when you're getting a piece. Like affiliate marketing. I'm going to go wear this half million dollar chain. All the other artists underneath me are going to go buy their $20,000 chain. Let them get it through my link so I get 15%. That's, all, that's, all, that's, all, that's how the uh, the women artists be, bro. They'll yeah. go wear Fashion Nova, have the Fashion Nova link in their bio. Yeah. All their fans buying Fashion Nova. They're getting like 30 40%. Crazy, bro, but I don't ever see male artists doing anything out like there with the shit they wear. But it's something not cool about that, I think. And that's stupid. What's not cool about not making money? But it's not. <laughs> it's not even just the artist. It's the male artist. I mean, the male audience. Okay, okay yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it is us. We the problem. Yeah, we are the problem. <laughs> Dude, male audience looks at it completely different. Female artists, they are heavily supportive. And yeah, mon- monetizing definitely looks different. It, it looks a lot different once you get to a certain point. Um, Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Now, with that being said, though, different topic. Staying in your hometown or going to the big city. Should an artist or somebody who wants to be in the music industry stay in their hometown or should they go to Atlanta? Should they go to L.A.? Should they go to New York? Nashville. Nashville. Big City, bro. Come on, man. No, I, I speak on it once we get into it, man. You know what I'm saying? But Big City. Oh, right. no. We're going to get right into it. Oh, we're running into it. Play a clip or anything like that. Oh, like, man, yeah, I mean, you were, you, were, you were a case study. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to say. I, I am a case study. Bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I don't think everybody knows that, bro, but I'm not from Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? I've been living in Atlanta for maybe the last six years at this point. Originally, I'm from a very small country town, like an hour south of here. And I left to move to Virginia and then left Virginia to come here once I got kicked out of school. And I can speak very confidently and say that I don't think I would be the person I am if I didn't move to Atlanta. One, and like I said, every major city isn't necessarily like this, but one of the big things about Atlanta is it's very um, community oriented, right? And for good and bad reasons, right? Like when you're not in the community, the community is tight. You locked out. But like once you get in, it's like you're 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 embraced. It's warm. You know what I'm saying? You know people everywhere you go. It's nice. You know what I'm saying? It's nice. I remember being on the outside of the circle, looking in and then getting in and like, okay, this is what it's like. So I like that aspect of it. Two, more opportunities come through here. You know, um, when I first moved here, the way I was meeting people and doing things was just going to local shows. And where I'm from in Barnesville. You might see a concert once every couple of months. And in Atlanta, bro, it'd be like 15 shows happening a week. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got options all over the city of where you could go. Bro, a lot of big people come, and You don't even know that they came. Yeah, exactly. They'd be like, dang. Bro. And I know LA and New York, Miami, they're even worse with stuff like that. But yeah, you'll, you'd be like, man, I actually would have went to that show if I knew that they were here. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's like, so, and this is why I do get conflicted with like this question, right? Should you move to a big city? You know what I'm saying? I stay where you at. Now, I think that what we do currently in terms of the agency, in terms of even like this podcast, well, I guess you live it. If you were willing to move around somewhere else, we could, in theory, do this wherever the fuck we was at, right? Yeah. 
But I don't know if I would have had the mentality to do these things and move the way I did if I hadn't moved to a big city. So that's where I get conflicted with. Like, I could have done it back where I'm from, but would I even think the way I think if I never moved out here? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think sometimes, like, you can make an argument for the execution aspect of it all. Yeah, I could have just, you know, you could be in a small town and fly to these different places to do work and get things done. But it's, sometimes it's something about being in that like twenty four seven that just like changes your psyche a little bit, yeah. you know. So, see, so I'm gonna answer for somebody who is absolutely not a case study. <laughs> you know, I'm from Decatur, being all around Atlanta, uh, in sport. Yeah, you know what I'm saying <laughs> like for real, every single part of town, whether it's living school, grandparents, shipped across town, all the way, whatever, whatever. Um, and I see it like this. Today in the music industry, more than ever, you can be in a town that's not a big town and be successful yeah. as an artist and even on the professional side. Yeah. I actually know some producers who moved to LA and they were like, man, I'm paying all this high rent. What am I doing? And then do move to Oregon. All right. Now, I ain't going to say much about Oregon because I don't know much about Oregon, but. That's one of the things where you go, or, you know what I'm saying? But he was like, yeah, and then I just go to L.A., and when I'm in there, for that two-week period, I batch all my meetings and stuff, just like what we do, yeah. and people are more willing to come out for you anyway because they know you're not going to be there for long. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's scarcity, that's right? True. That's true. So that's the type of thing that we're seeing more and more people do, yeah. right? Because even when you go back traditionally, L.A. and New York, was really the cities mm -hmm. in Nashville, right? More people stay in Atlanta today than used to, or than they would before, because we have that flexibility. We're like, oh. it's a lot of people like, I don't want to move to LA. I want to stay in Atlanta as much as I can, but I'm going to do business over in LA. Yep. So there's that for that tier. Then you got people who are out in whatever city that they are. They are figuring out ways to do business in cities like Atlanta, because Atlanta's not even the it, um, the top of the top but it's huge in terms of the creativity the business obviously LA and New York so I think it's very possible because I see people doing it it just depends on where you are in it all mm -hmm. and knowing yourself one are you going to be inspired right, to move a certain way mm -hmm. without having a certain type of people around you like some people they need that like I need the information I need the exchange I just need to see how this shit works or I can't even get a certain mentorship or job if I'm not there and I'm not, not around yeah. in a lot of ways. Now you got more people like us where we got a lot of people on our team that are, I mean, we got one in Oklahoma. You know what I'm saying? I still think we that. We got two people in Oklahoma, actually. Yeah. Right? One in Alabama. Now we got Alabama, right? right? Yeah, that might be the two most obscure, <laughs> obscure places. Probably. Place from from probably. <laughs> right? So you can get connected to these entities from wherever you are yeah. in today's day and age. And, you know, one artist in Virginia, I don't want to say the artist's name because I don't know if he wants people to know where he lives and everything, but he's doing crazy, done 100 million plus streams and he doesn't want to be a part of the record label industry or, I mean, the music industry traditionally. He don't want to tour. He don't want to do none of that stuff, but he's just running up his numbers, going crazy. A lot of people know if I said his name, y'all would, would know it, but he's doing it all from his shit. Yeah. Right where he is, so it's extremely possible. But you got to be a certain type of person, have a certain type of motivation, and then of course it has to work. And it's harder, one hundred percent. It's harder, yeah. All right, to not have people on your side because you have to build the thing that creates the the magnet uh, magnetic um, attraction. But it's hard to do that from ground zero yeah. versus just going to the place that people are attracted to already and then catching flies over there because they're already coming. Yeah, but the thing about that, though, that like, that people romanticize the opportunity aspect of it, but I think they they don't often acknowledge the competition aspect of it, right? Yes. Like, there are people who are like, man, I want to move to Atlanta because Atlanta's, like I said, Atlanta's, Atlanta's has a reputation like, for being very community Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very community-oriented. But like I said, as a person that had to get in to that shit, it wasn't easy, bro. Like, like I don't think what helped me was getting a job out here. You know, I had to kind of swallow my pride and be like, I'm gonna get a job out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause this shit ain't gonna hit the way I thought it was gonna hit, you know, um, as fast as I thought it would, which is, is whatever. But 
that was my end, you know what I'm saying? So I could imagine the artist moving out here, it was like, I'm not getting a paid job, I mean, so I'm just gonna come out here and network and go to shows and motherfuckers gonna fuck with me because I'm me. I'm like, no, bro, it very rarely works like that, you know what I'm saying? Unless you know people already. And I've known countless artists to move to different cities thinking like that on me, shit, fa, I'm just gonna get out there and all these opportunities gonna open up. Yep. Not even realizing you the hundredth artist this week to have the same idea. Hey man, I'm moving out to LA. I'm moving out to New York. I'm moving out there. The only one I think don't get that much attention like that is Nashville probably. Motherfuckers probably just up and go to Nashville and be okay if you don't make country. Because all the people who don't make country have to band together to support yeah. each other. And that, and that, that's that's Nashville. Nashville's, Nashville's a different city. Yeah, for sure. You because make you got all those too. bars that you get to perform mm -hmm. in. It's a it's a different culture. Failure looks different in Nashville. Yeah, exactly. You know, what I'm saying I'm not saying that everything's sweet, but like, especially let's just say hip hop coming to Atlanta. Like people not really trying to see you if you're not that person. Yeah, it's like the reverse in Atlanta, right? Like, yeah. like you go to Nashville, and all the rappers might be sticking together because they're like, hey, we all we got the country motherfuckers run shit out here. In Atlanta, it's like, oh, you one of many. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, I'm saying like we're not about to go watch random rap in bars in most cases. Oh, most yeah. most public. Yeah. Some people were into like going to like a Apache type pack cafe type vibe, underground shows a little bit. Like, okay, you might have that small, small niche, yeah. but just the general public where in Nashville, even a motherfucker who's not in the country, while they're in Nashville, you know, when in their own, they'll go watch yeah. <laughs> some, some country <laughs> performers at a random bar. Yeah. It's just a different type of vibe. So, you know, I don't, I don't know how you account for that, but <laughs> <laughs> like the reality is, yeah, land is different. Now, I'd, and I just hear it and see it all the time from the people who come here. Like, but for me, you know, I realize my vision of the world is is warped because of where I'm from. Yeah, you spoiled, bro. Yeah, because I'm already your whole life. All I all I I've ever known was, you know, like the black culture, black success. You know, I always saw all sides. You know, you sit here, people. Some people go there like, man, I never seen black people with money or whatever. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like my doc did his. My mayor, you know, everybody, everybody in black. So I'm like, it was like, it's, it's, it's a different culture. Um, and I appreciate it more. You know, we got the women. We got, we got a lot, man. We got a lot of good things. I hear a lot of y'all be hating on Atlanta too. That y'all come because y'all go, go come to the wrong part. So y'all hang with the wrong people. Like, y'all, a lot of times y'all really hanging with transplants. Just for real. No, but I mean, well, I guess I can't. I can't really. Yeah, but she, she at least from the country of Georgia, like in, in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Like that's different. It's still a different. I'm talking about them people who come from further places. I don't wanna I don't wanna, you know. Let's so stay out the transplant covers. I'm like, man, you know. <laughs> but I feel like over six years, I'm like an underrated Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. I don't live all over the city, bro. And, and nowhere that somebody from Atlanta knows about it, I probably don't know about it. You could you can pass, bro. Yeah. <laughs> well yeah, but I the only only thing I would tell to somebody that's making that jump is like one, research the city you think you want to move to. Yes. No, because like you said, like Atlanta, New York, LA, probably the pop, most popular three, but we got clients who just moved to Nashville because they didn't, because Nashville is cheaper than Atlanta or at least whatever we're moving to. And they were like, hey. Hip hop clients specifically. Yeah, hip hop clients, yeah. And they were like, hey, it's close to Atlanta. We can get there in three hours. This real, Atlanta's really where we want to be, but Nashville got the prices that we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. um, like you said, the artists you talked to move to Oregon and be close to LA. You know people that live in Jersey to be close to New York, right? You don't have to always be in that city. You know, people there, people out here living in Stockbridge to be close to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to be in that city. So, one, do that research on, you know, do you have to actually be in that city to be a part of that city? Two, I would encourage everybody to try to find someone that's a part of that, that scene's local music culture and to talk to them, ask them what it's like, you know, like, before I came to Atlanta, I, I got I had the privilege of kind of seeing it because of events like A3C and, you know, just walking around like different places in the city. And that kind of let me know, like, oh yeah, I want to move out here. You know what I'm saying? This is this is the shit. But I don't know. What if I was like, you know, a pop artist enthusiast and I moved to Atlanta? I'd have been, been sick, you know, ass out. Now I've seen that happen. I think some people would think it's about being in the mix every day, all the time. Yeah. Right. You see this TV yeah. version of things. And a lot of times people ain't in the mix. And they behind their computers, yeah, doing some work. So you don't have somewhere. to be there every single day, not at all. Now, it's it makes sense that that vision is there because at one point in time it was more like that. Now we're super remote work. Mm -hmm. Like remember we we spoke to Jr. on um, that talk we had a couple of weeks ago. 
And he was like, he doesn't get to be in that process before. He like, he made more money being behind a computer as an executive, but he misses the part of the game where he was actually in the studio working with people, collaborating. That doesn't happen like that anymore, right? So maybe our visions of going to these big cities come from that. Right, too, when culture really was more collaborative, more mixy, more events and things like that. But today, the reality is not as pretty. You know, you'll have more people spread out that don't see each other all the time, but then they'll have these events. But you just need to be able to make it that two hour drive to get to the city if you, you know, you're further out at cheaper with um, space really ain't that bad when in reality, you only need to be there in the city one day that month. Yeah, that's how it was when I moved out here, bro. Like, where I'm from, like, hour, 20 minutes from the city. But I used to make that drive, you know, a couple times a week. You know what I'm saying? I had shit going on. Or whenever something be going on, oh, it's this networking event. Oh, it's A3C going on. Oh, this artist wants to link up. Yeah, I'll make that, you know, three hours, take that three hours out right. my day. Um, and then, you know, some people find strategic ways to, to go about it, too. Like, go to school in certain places, right? Like, I know a lot of people that went to Georgia State because they wanted to be yes. here. You know, finding, like, cheaper ways to get there. But my mind was going a different way when you said strategic. What's your mean? I was thinking more like, you know, get you a little boo in the city. I mean, boo, college, same thing. So you can see, you know what I mean? Somebody's friend. You, know, you can you can stay the night if a And I did. Or I did. I did. You know, so I, that's I, what I'm saying. I've been there. I, I'm sure you have. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sure you have. So you get you a situation <laughs> that can give you some free or low cost overhead while you're in the city. <laughs> And then my, my first Atlanta love went to Georgia State, man. You know what I'm saying? She was right smack in the city, man. Right. Did you love her the city? Both, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean, man? I'm, I'm be questioning my love, bro. <laughs> I love her and the city. Maybe the city a little more, but you know what I'm saying? That's why she was your first, not your last. Yeah, exactly. Damn. Damn. <laughs> but there's a look, there's a lot of ways to flip and make the city work for y'all. So like I don't think people need to come, but yeah, the biggest thing is 100% knowing yourself and how you are, who you got to be around. Now, there's a lot of people in spaces where they are, especially where you're like, I just need to escape this environment for whatever that means, whether it's family, the streets, or just needing that change of environment to start a new pa mm -hmm. uh, a pattern, whatever that is. Know yourself, you know. Know your worth. I feel like you always got to say that. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and make a decision from there. But it's not 100% necessary. Again, we don't go to L.A. We have pressures to live in L.A. And I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years prior, we might have had to live in L.A. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot of stuff we do, we would have had to live in L.A. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, we go to L.A. We frequent it often. We still do feel those pressures at times, too. I just got asked that question like yesterday. That's it's crazy, saying. bro. So when you moving to L.A., I was like, who told you that? <laughs> Where should you get there from? <laughs> <laughs> but you can make it work. I know people who are making a hell of money um, and doing very well for themselves who have made it work where they live. They moved out there for maybe two years and then came back. Mm -hmm. But most people are figuring a way to not have to be forced to live in those main cities. Mm -hmm. So that's it there. Like, for those who have... Just those questions. It's not that serious. I know people say it all the time. Now, switching directions real quick. I want to talk about this A&P situation to end off the pot. So explain, people, what A&P is, because I feel like a lot of people aren't. And then we're going to get in how they also are fucking up the money on their track, just like the Superstar track. Yeah, man. So A&P is a, essentially this collective of uh streamers um so casa net is, the, is the, the big face that most people have probably seen there's a couple other people in there chris um you know what i'm saying i can't think of the other guy's name but it's, it's, a, it's pretty much a big like streaming collective right. and they dropped this video recently uh where it was like a love and valentine's day challenge essentially where they each went and got just a different female creator like a songwriter or singer rapper or something like that they were broken off into pairs they created songs for the video, um, and then at the end they released it, and they're kind of letting their audience pick right. who had the best song. A lot of really dope music came out of it, but the two things that the two things that drew my attention to this is the first thing about it is we we had a, we had a client, you know what I'm saying? We had somebody that we fought with, be a part of it, and I'm watching. Actually, let me double back. They all fucked up because nobody has released the song yet. 
right? So they have this. If you go look at the original video on their YouTube channel, at one point it was trending on YouTube. It was like top three, and then like Drake knocked it down. Um, it's like 1.3 million views in a couple of days. Like everybody who was a part of that video is having a bit of a viral moment right now. Yeah. Our client and uh, one of the other artists are having maybe bigger viral moments out of it. Their songs seem to be the one that people like the most. But everybody that was a part of that is having a moment. None of them have released have released the songs or put the songs out. None of them are capping musically, yeah. musically from that moment. Socially, yes, right? Like they've all gained followers. They've all jumped up in, in some way, videos, but musically not capped at all. You said it was number one trending on YouTube, right? No, it was number three. Number three trending on YouTube. Yeah, and they got knocked down for like maybe like nine or 10 now. Drake, Drake came and <laughs> kissed it up. <laughs> <bro>. <laughs> so you got a song. It was the video or that introduced everything or the song itself? The video. The video. The video introducing everything. Number three trending on YouTube. You don't even have a song out. Mm -hmm. Right? YouTube, that's hard achievement to make. Very hard, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, and they got the pool for it. Like, it's not like trending isn't like a new thing for them. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so it, which makes me even more angry about it because that means that you, you had a good idea that this could happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why not have the things in place ready to go when well, it hits? <laughs> I think that goes back to the complexity of being an artist, to artist credit, right? Mm -hmm. Where influencers don't have to deal with all that. Yeah. Most spaces, you got your main place, you put up the content, and then everything's clear from that same platform. Artists are doing YouTube to post on Instagram or TikTok, but then they have a whole other suite of technology to figure out how their music is performing, deals I gotta create, mechanical royalties, yeah. publishing, like all, like all these little things to figure out. They just, hey, I post, I get the money, you know, everything shows up. Yeah, the platform take care of it. Right, the platform take care of it. <laughs> that, don't, that don't happen with music. So it's easy to make that mistake as an influencer, especially if you're just coming from a creative space, but I love the concept. The way they pop this off, Bro, crazy rollout. Bro. It was amazing. It's crazy. an amazing rollout. We need to put the link in the description to the video yeah. of them like rolling this whole thing out. It is long. It's like an hour long. Yeah. But they basically create an episode, right? This whole show of this. We, we got this competition going. They show you the ins and the outs as they vlog in, and then it, it ends with every single song. All right? It's like a really like a TV show, like how they do the competitions. Yeah. All right, hey, go yeah. make a song, and here's the end, and then the audience votes. That's basically what they did in one episode. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. So that's all I like, man. If, they, if that, and if anybody knows that the AMP team, bro, please send them my way, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, would, I would give these motherfuckers a free consultation, because you can, you know when you see influencers, you can tell they don't know that, like you said, they don't know much about music stuff. Like, I look at some of them, I'm like, yeah, bro, I can tell. I don't know, but Kai just be fucking around, you know what I'm saying? Chris, um, which is one of the guys that has a song that's going crazy, I've seen his fan base talk about like they wish he would take music a lot more seriously. Yeah, his shit was good. Yeah, it's like he's you know, he's he's weaving through that shit. He just needs to walk the line straight, bro. We already talked about this, bro. You making that content creator money. Though. Right, bro. The streaming money is different, man. Hard. Yeah. He's yeah. Motivated. You gotta be DDG where there's some intrinsic motivation where you really want it to be this shit. Yeah. Already. Yeah. But otherwise, why am I going to do that? Yeah. I mean, but that's also why I get confused. Bro. Like, this is like, because I would argue that if we asked them, most of them would say it's for the love of music. Mm -hmm. And this would be my gripe with artists that say that. Is okay. If you love this shit, why not figure out how to release it the right way so we can love it right there with you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if I, if I love the game of basketball, I'm going to figure out how to do this shit the right way so I can play this shit the right way. You know what I'm saying? If I love a certain video game, I'm going to go learn all the rules and shit so I can play it that way. You said what? I don't think it goes that way. But, man, but it should, man. <laughs> <laughs> I put it all on YouTube. What else do you need? People can find it on YouTube. That's where I would be. Oh, bro, he ain't even put it on his. The Chris, Chris example specifically, that's the one that's you know, blowing me. That, that, that's the right top bat to, you know, CBA, you know what I'm saying? To be, to be honest, <laughs> uh, in, in one way or another. But, no, nah, I do get that, man. Like I said, it, that to me is what's interesting, always the most interesting about watching influencers become artists, like watching them go through the process of figuring music out. Because we talked about it before. I think both sides think the other side have it easier, right? And then both sides learn how hard the other side have it has it. Like I said, like our client that was a part of it, she's telling me about, like, AMP's, like, shooting process. And she's like, these motherfuckers be working, bro, like like 12, 14 hours a day, 
cameras rolling all the time, editors all over the house, you know what I'm saying? Like they're like, and she's like, it gave me such a deeper appreciation for the way content creators move. And I can assume they're seeing her from the other side, like, damn, you gotta fill out this paperwork. We gotta talk about splits. We gotta do X, Y, Z. I ain't know y'all artists did all this type of shit, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's always cool to see both sides like go through that. I can I can respect that. But it shouldn't be that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I said, bro, this song was out the day that video came out. But all those artists had their songs out the day that video came out. At least two of them will be probably hitting like a million right now. You know what I'm saying? The other the others that was a part of it, which y'all will see once y'all watch it. Y'all know exactly which ones I'm talking about, which ones I'm not talking about. The other ones, maybe a couple cool hundred thousand to tens of thousands. You know what I'm saying? But either way, like they could have capped so much harder off of this moment. Cause but that type of creativity to roll out into the songs is the type of shit that like we wish regular artists clients would do. You know what I'm saying? And so the yeah. fact that they have the content infrastructure to put that type of shit together and they actually have like decent artists within the group, that shit could go so much further than I think it is it, it, it's currently going, you know, and I think that my fear is that by the time they get it together and actually put it out, the the moment it be gone, like we've seen so many times before. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you can respark it with some ads and some influence and shit, but like this shit would have hit hot off the press, bro. Like I said, you know, M in a couple of days, I believe that wholeheartedly. I don't know, man. The attention that they get in their streams, though, they could probably work it back in. Maybe. Because the only ones that super super stream crazy is Kai streams crazy because Kai's Kai there's this dude in that name Phantom um Phantom does pretty well I think Phantom's a pretty decent artist already and there was another one like those two or three maybe are like cool you know what's funny back to the shit actually though and it shows how little experience they have in this space what it's all the reverse today what do we do we tell people Y'all really don't even need to worry about a music video until the shit's popping, yeah. right? But what do many artists do? Still, they'll drop the music video at release because they have this entire vision, right? Mm -hmm. Where do you see somebody dropping the entire music video and the song's not even out? Like, that's the crazy part about it. They dropped three high quality as fuck. I know, like, miles. Five, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> high quality as fuck music videos <laughs> with the song not out. Not a teaser, the whole song. And they didn't even drop the music videos separately, by the way. They never posted it on their own. Maybe they are right now as we speak. They might be sep uh, posting it like separately for people to watch it. The music videos aren't a part of this like hour plus long stream, however long that thing is. So people can't just go individually to find, say, yeah, I like this song. Let me go listen to it this way. Yeah. That's just an experience. That's great. Um, creativity, raw talent, perspective in terms of how they put that shit together. But yeah, a, a music manager being involved from ground up probably would be like, oh, whoa, whoa. But maybe that would have prevented that shit from getting to where it was. Cause who knows? They might've just came up with the idea, had some fun. And did that in a real short period of time. Not for I know. Not for us. Yeah, but for I know it's supposed to get, it was supposed to come out like a while ago. You know, and damn, uh, some editing issues. But sometimes see, timing. You know what I'm saying? Tough. But would it have hit the same? <laughs> Actually, now think about it. It probably might have went bigger, bro. Cause like if Drake hand came out and knocked it out, you know what I'm saying? Like if they came out early, maybe they would have missed that window. Yeah, yeah, I don't know who else. But now nah, I think if it would have came out when it was supposed to come out, they would have got clipped by somebody else. You know, pretty much. But yeah, man, it's like. I think that they're going to be cool, especially the songs that, you know, are doing pretty well that the fans seem to be translating to. There are some fan accounts, even on like TikTok and YouTube, like starting to upload the videos, you know, on their channels, which, which speaks a lot to it. And, you know, I'm pretty sure somebody in the music industry ecosystem is saying this just like we are, and, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's, it's probably trying to figure out how they're going to take advantage of this or cap or do whatever. I don't think all of them will because Kai does pretty good monthly listeners and I don't think he signed to a label or nothing. Like nobody's got him yet, you know? And it's like, why would he, bro? I don't know if I can post this shit to my YouTube channel and my fans gonna go listen to it and, and, and then the algorithm gonna pick me up and keep me at a cool, cause he gotta be at least like 3 million monthly listeners. What's he at? Oh, nine, I was way off. 916,000, still a respectable amount. You probably said that 3 million cause when the song was popping, you yeah. probably had more at the time. Cause he only has two songs out. Yeah. So let that be known. Two songs out, 916,000 monthly listeners. 
but look at that shit, bro. You can tell he ain't like, taking it seriously. Right. Look, look at that profile picture. His profile's barely <laughs> developed. Got forty million on one song and two million on the other. So you know, you know. That's probably the influence be pissing me off, bro. Shit don't make no money, bro. I mean, I don't no money, no sense. Because I got so much money, so it's like you know, this shit should at least, at least get the photo shoot, man. So I don't know, man. Just so one, like, if anybody out there knows, if anybody out there knows the AMP team, you know, what I'm saying they can push them back our way. I love to help them out with that, just because you know, what I'm saying one, it'd be cool, but then two, you know, what I'm saying like our client was a part of it, man. I think they 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 had some some real dope shit that came out of it. Was hard. Some is hard, bro. Yeah. Um, but then two, bro, like if you are an influencer listening to this. And you have dreams of crossing over to the music side. Please study the way music artists do shit. Like at least, at least attempt to do things the right way. Because just like this, well, like I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt of not thinking the video would go viral. They get viral videos all the time. They they knew there was a high chance this shit could go viral. But you regular influencer, regular person, you never know. You know what I'm saying? So the best thing you can do for yourself is make sure all your ducks are on the road. So if that shit do hit, then great. You were ready for it. And if it don't hit, then you got some practice in it. <laughs> and we can leave it at that <laughs> and don't forget to check us out every Tuesday every Thursday if no labels necessary I'm Brain Man Sean and I'm Corey and we out